frustrated fall camp because it seems like you get just like little things nagging you. Not anything serious, just little things. Maybe mm -hmm. kept you out a couple more days than maybe you, you would have liked. Oh uh, yeah, most definitely. You know, every time you know you're away from the team and you know away from the game, something that you love so much, it's definitely you know nag it's definitely um, aggravating. But you know, at the end of the day, you know I worked through it and. You know, I think the coach is doing a great job of, you know, um, giving me rest when I need it, things like that. But um, definitely, like I said, it's not the serious, but it's definitely irritating. If you had to put a percentage on where you're at uh, health-wise right now, um, you know, 85, 90 percent. Um, of course, you want to be 100, but truthfully, you'll never be 100. You know, fall first day of fall camp is best you're gonna feel the rest of the year. So um, being at that, you know, 85, 90 is great for me. Um, I gotta just make sure that I take every day, you know, and uh, make sure that you know I just treat my body right. Where do you feel? Do you feel like you've gotten better in these past couple weeks? And if so, where specifically have you made your biggest improvement? Um, for me, I could probably say just one of my biggest improvements probably would be I think press technique. Last year, you know, I stuck my feet a lot. I didn't really move too much, which put me at you know dangerous positions sometimes. So, you know, I took that into account, and you know, with Coach Perry and watching film and things like that, um, I'm more active on my press. And also just off my, my off man, uh, I think I raised my level on that too. Just reading the quarterback three-step drop and gauging, you know, when I need to backpedal fast and things like that. I remember talking to you a couple of weeks ago and you talked about, uh, you know, how you learned about preparation from Jordan, how he kind of had these instincts where he knew it was going to happen. It seems like between that, learning that, and then obviously your improvements in press and playing off man, that you're putting yourself in a position to be a bigger playmaker. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Um, you know, you, you strive to be the best, you know, the best player out there. And I want to be the best corner in the nation this year. You know, that's what I strive to be. Um, and like you said, it comes with doing things, doing it consistent. You know, last, you know, this year I strived on, you know, just learning the offense more. Um, what offense I like to attack or our defense, and just like you said, learning um, my off man and press. And I think with that, the combination and all that, and if you really, you know, put yourself into every game and study for it. Um, like it's your last, and you'd be all right. Do you have uh, <laughs> Mike Doc's giving you a little background noise right now? Um, a not a chip on your shoulder, but you know how you say you want to be the best corner in the nation. And a couple times last year, Mac Brown, Chip Kelly, basically said that you know the Beavers had two pro corners between JP, you know, and yourself. Mm -hmm. I know you 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 heard those things. Um, is that something maybe you, you put on your metaphorical wall, so to speak, a little bulletin board, you know, to kind of just remind people. Yeah, Beavers did have two pro corners on the team. Right? Um, not really. Um, don't get me wrong. I, uh, I'm grateful for Mac and also Chip to say that. You know, that's a big deal for you know two coaches that you're playing against to to acknowledge that. But um, at the end of the day, I don't really think about that. Um, I know at the end of the day, if I really want to show people that the Beavers have two pro corners, I gotta play on the field. So um, thinking about it too much, that's not that's not me, and that's something that you know I just don't do. I want to ask you about a couple of teammates in, in the secondary. First of all, Larry Scott. Um, a lot of people will know his story. You know, tore his ACL second day at fall camp a couple of years ago. He's worked his way back. He had a tragedy in his family. How have you seen Larry grow both on the field and maybe as a person? Oh, I've seen, I seen Larry grow a lot. Um, you know, just the first day, truthfully, it might be crazy to say, but the first day I've seen the talent in him, just the way his movements and things. And um, obviously he got hurt. And it takes a strong person, you know, to, to go through something like that on your second day as a freshman and have that mental mindset that he had. So um, I could say, you know, mentally, you know, he's, he's one of the strongest you know, players I've been around. And he, he, keeps, he keeps everything in his perspective and just has a good outlook on everything. You know, that's kudos to his family, you know, and also him as a person. But um, on, on the field, you can just see his development. He's still got a lot of ways to go, and it's scary because he's already good. So um, if he got – you know that much more improvement to make is going to be dangerous for people when he once he get the groove of things and you know the game slows down for him it's going to be real dangerous. How, I mean, how exciting is it the fact that you, you have you know yourself and Sean, Stephen, and Larry's sort of a dark horse in there, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Um, if anybody came out here and watched practice, you'll see you know Larry Scott making picks. Um, right now he's he's leading our. We we have a chart, you know, he's leading the chart of interceptions and he's up there at PBUs, all that stuff. So, you know, with that production, you know that he's, he's gonna be a great player for us. But um he's definitely a dark horse. But he's you know somebody that we gotta make sure that he keeps his head right. You know, he's that fourth spot is hard as a corner, you know, because you you're just missing being game time. But um at the end of the day you never know. So um you gotta just make sure that he prepares every day like he's been doing and he'll be all right.
Um, and a, you know, he's got a f his name, Larry Scott, is the same name as the Pac-12 commissioner. Do yeah. you guys have fun with that at all? He said some people call him the commish. Uh, sometimes, sometimes. Um, I really don't, I really don't buy into it too much. Um, I got, I just call him little Larry. But um, uh, I heard a couple guys say a little things about it, but we don't really talk about it too much. Uh, last one, Deshaun Hunt. Mm -hmm. um, obviously not going to be redshirting. Mm -hmm. uh, he said that he tries to – he's learned a lot from you. He said that you were one of the first players that he kind of told. Um, and how he wants to kind of follow the footsteps of, of, of J.P. Mm -hmm. JP you know, did retro. Do you see similarities between the two? Obviously, it's tough to compare two freshmen to yeah. JP went, yeah. but maybe when a young Almost definitely. Most definitely. Um, just especially see him at that nickel spot. He's a savvy player. He's, he's really smart. And to be a freshman, you know, he, he's really, really smart. And uh, just watching him on film and to see, see the things he does off the field, you know, he's always, you know, asking me to watch film. He's always in the film room. He's always studying playbooks, you know, and I think it shows on the field. And um, that's something that reminds me of Jordan. Jordan was a gym rat. Um, and, it, and it showed, and I think that you know, over the years, if he progresses how Jordan does, he could be that same player.